public speaking, communication, presentation. With these words, we use the word skill. We say public speaking skill, communication skill, presentation skill. We normally do not use the word talent with it because talent comes naturally. Skill can be developed through hours and hours of hard work. If you have a well-structured speech and if you can use public speaking ability skill, if you can combine these two, you can deliver a powerful speech, powerful presentation. And as a result of that, you can convince, persuade, inspire an audience. A great morning to every single one of you who has joined this program. Dr. Rasika and the organizing team, thank you very much. I consider this a great pleasure. I'm deeply honored to join one more time University of Sabargamo. And after I joined a few minutes ago, what I got to know made me even happier. I got to know that presentation skills, this particular part has been included into your syllabus. Now, my dear students, the undergraduates, this is not something we can see in every single university of the country. Therefore, we need to have the attitude of gratitude. So shall we take a moment and appreciate, pay our gratitude to those who decided to organize this program and give a virtual round of at least, that's the least we can do. So quickly go to the reaction button and select the applause reaction so that we can at least pay the gratitude to this wonderful team. Right. Just give a virtual round of applause. So Dr. Rasik and the team, thank you very much for organizing this. Like you mentioned, I firmly believe that university students, they are the people that we should approach help because they are the future generation of the nation. Public speaking, presentation, communication, like I said, these are skills. And today we are going to focus on structuring, craft in the speech. That is what we are going to do. But before what we are going to discuss, you should ask a question from yourself. Why? Why public speaking? Why craft in a speech? Why are we discussing that today? Even before that, I have a, a humble request for every single participant here. The next hour, one and a half hours we are going to spend will be useful, valuable for you. So you are joining from your home, from your houses or from your boarding places. There will be a lot of distractions over there. Therefore, try to minimize the distractions have the purpose, understand the purpose of this and take a notebook with you, have a notebook with you. If you find anything important, interesting, valuable, feel free to take down because the things you are going to learn can be used in your life. Other than that, these things are not only for your knowledge, but to apply. So I said, why part is needed? Why do we need to focus on public speaking? Before I'm going to give any answer, I'll show you an answer. Just take a look at it and then let's continue the discussion. Just have a read. Take a few seconds. Public speaking is no longer a soft skill. It's your key to success in any field. Great persuaders have a competitive edge or competitive advantage in the age of ideas. Carmine Gallo. Some of you might have heard of him. He's a keynote speaker, a leadership trainer, best-selling author. So he says public speaking is no more soft skill. It is mandatory. My dear friends, my dear undergraduates, if you have that skill, if you can develop this skill, have our words. You don't want to worry about your 
future that much because you have got one of the best skills you need to possess. So that is why part. And let me add a few more things to prove my answer. You are in first year. During first year, everyone, there will be presentations. Your beloved lecturers will be in the panel and you will have to present presentations. So you need to know the skill. You go to second year, same thing will happen. You go to third year, same thing will happen. You go to fourth year, I think four years are there, or oh, special degrees. Throughout your university life, you will have to deliver presentations. So it is worth, it is worth of listening to this lecture. Then not a lecture, I don't call this a lecture, this presentation. You graduate, you go to the professional world, corporate world job market so if you want to join the dream company you will have to face the interview there what should you do you should present what you got to say there also there is a presentation if you pass the interview only you get the opportunity to join that company so you join that company then is it over no then you will have to talk to your team members Talk to your senior managers, talk to your directors, maybe at the director board meetings, you will have to deliver presentation. It's not going to end. So it is worth, it is worth learning public speaking or presentation skills. We can use a lot of terms here. That is why we are going to take a look at the way we can structure a speech, structure a presentation. Let's learn the traditional methods and I will share some of the modern techniques that we use and public speakers use around the globe. If you think sounds great, time to focus on. So let's get straight into it. Like anything, we need to know the way to craft, structure our speech. Like Dr. Rasika mentioned, it doesn't matter. It's a one to two minute speech or maybe 30 minutes to 40 minutes, one or one hour long one can be a prepared one, can be unprepared, though we call it impromptu, or we can say unplanned. Still, you need to be able to craft that speech, structure that. We are going to share a few techniques or some techniques, and then you can start using them from today onwards. Before structuring part, there are some things to remember. Purpose why why am i in front of you today a couple of weeks ago or one or two weeks ago when dr rasik called me and told about this program i asked him questions what is a program who are the audience members and the duration and what are the things we should discuss and what are the when it comes to public speaking what are the areas that you think the undergraduates will have to work on why i asked those questions because i wanted to find out the purpose of this program of my speech why i'm in front of you today just like that everyone whenever you are given a chance to speak ask yourself the question what is the purpose? Ask the person who gave you the opportunity, the purpose. Now today, one of your fellow students or fellow uh, undergraduates welcomed us. So the purpose of that particular speech is welcome everyone to the program. And another person, uh, Dr. Rasika, what he did, he introduced the program and another undergraduate introduced uh, the speaker as well. A little bit of so three people three different purposes when you have a presentation you need to understand let's say to deliver after your project there is a presentation and you should understand the purpose of it so number one everyone before you do anything understand the purpose of it and at the same time with the permission of dr rasik if there are any undergraduates or any participants who would like to turn on the camera please feel free to do so. Um, that's not a problem. If you like to turn on the camera, if you think it is okay, you can turn on the cameras so that I can see your facial expressions that who is falling asleep. If someone is falling asleep, I know that I should change the tone 
or do something about it. Right, the first thing, or the purpose. I mean, uh, yeah, I um, would like to ask all the students, uh, if you can switch on your camera, it, it'll, it'll be really nice because it, it gives a punch to the speaker also. It's, right. it's, it's nice to speak to people other than speak to screens. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Rasika. Thanks a lot. Right. So know the purpose objective of the speech. Different speeches have different purposes. Welcome speeches, thanking speeches or word of thanks. Sometimes we deliver speeches to inspire the audience, motivate them. Sometimes we have a product and we want to raise the awareness and that's the purpose. With the purpose, everyone, we need to understand who is in the audience. That's why I asked a fair question from Dr. Rasika, who is in the audience? Then he said, first years of this faculty. So I know that there are more than second years or third years, first year students are there. Then I know how to pitch my presentation, audience. Know your purpose, know your audience. And the other thing is time duration. I have been given one hour. It doesn't mean that I can take one and a half hours, two hours or three hours and talk whatever I want to. But how many times have you seen you ask the speaker to just take five minutes, right? Just five minutes. And the speaker says, all right, five minutes. I will take three minutes. And he takes 33 minutes. And you think, oh, this person is not going to finish. This person is not going to stop talking. Everyone, if you are given some time, please try to complete, end your speech by the given time or allocated time. Within that time stay, just try to finish at least before that if you can. Before the given time, allocated time, or use the maximum time or given, maximum time given, allocated. Other than that, please do not try to speak, exceed the time. If they request, speak more. Time, man, time duration is a must. You deliver the presentation, let's say for the first semester or second semester, and the lecturers tell you that, advise you five to seven minutes presentation. It means five to seven minutes. It doesn't mean that 10 minutes. Just because we have to say more doesn't mean that we can exceed the time. If you're talking about speech competitions, I'm sure uh, the, your, your faculty will organize some in the future. If there is a time allocation, if you exceed one second, you are disqualified. Please take time duration seriously. Words limit. This is important, especially when you are delivering a speech at a contest. Words limit matters a lot. So I'll give you a quick hint here. Normally in public speaking, we say the rate or the speed, there is a rate. And when we think about the number of words we use per minute average is 100 to 120. Just make a note of it if it is a new thing, because in the future, if you get an opportunity to deliver five minutes speech, you know how you know how to do the math and it will be around 500 words, maybe 550 words, not 5000 words. When we train speakers, new speakers, what happens? Five to seven minute speech, they come up with 1000 words. So the first thing we say, kill the baby. Kill the baby means you have the speech, get rid of unwanted parts, reduce it to, or condense it to, uh, it's to 500, 600 words. So if you want to know the words limit, put 100, 120 words per minute. That's kind of a average. In public speaking, that's the average words limit per minute. Right. And Dr. Rasika, when he was, we were having the discussion, he mentioned that there are different purposes, right? Everyone, we need to know whether the occasion is a formal occasion or little semi-formal or casual occasion. Meaning is 
if it is let's say academic related presentation that you did a project and findings should be presented in front of your for your lecturers that is a formal occasion there you need to be very careful about the tone you use the words you use because it is a formal platform formal occasion there you cannot use unnecessary relevant things like humor you can't use funny things because they will laugh you will be reduced marks so i don't think anybody here would like to uh, lose any marks but let's say the same lecture panel is attending one of the let's say freshers nights or one of the entertainment event in your university after COVID-19 everything gets better and we go back to these in-person activities there you can see entertainment items they are they are to enjoy so maybe you can just add a little bit humor right relevantly because the lecturers are not there for a serious occasion to entertain themselves so there what you can do maybe you can story you can use stories maybe a little bit of humor just like that because everyone stories if you can remember stories our grandparents used to tell us stories right when we were young my grandfather is a great storyteller and we did not if we did not listen to him he would not continue he would say all right that's it just go back go back you guys are not listening i'm not going to continue so using stories let's say you are delivering a speech at a contest or in front of your uh, in front of your colleagues or junior students and you want to inspire them use the stories but if it is a very formal one still you can use the stories but in a little formal way i just told a little bit of a story i told about my grandfather then also maybe you also just went to your childhood and if your grandfather or grandmother also told the stories, then you were connected. Stories are kind of emotional clues that we can use, stories to connect with the listeners. But better to check the occasion. That's why we have said stories, yes or no. Characters, depending on the story, depending on the occasion, you can use one character two characters likewise like i said injecting humor using humor you need to remember the purpose you need to remember keep in your mind the occasion if it is a solemn occasion let's say it it, it, it is a funeral so you deliver the speech over there so no way you can use humor if it is an academic presentation maybe you can't I'm, I'm sure you can't and you don't use humor there but if it is a speech delivering at a contest or delivering in front of your for your batch mates maybe at the gavel club or a toastmasters club of course you can relevantly you can use these things so everyone these are some of the things we need to consider before we structure the speech or when we are structuring the speech. What is next? When we cook meals, when we cook something, of course we should use ingredients. A lot of spices are there, Sri Lankans. I can remember when I was young, I was thinking like when my mother was cooking, red color, yellow color, white color, Right, and then and, and like, uh, then like we can see garlic, curry leaves. I was really confused. So many times I tried to just, I gave it a try to cook a curry, but no luck. Because a lot of ingredients are there. But uh, speeches, I don't, I would say it's not that complicated, but there are ingredients, key ingredients. So three, main ingredients are there if those three are missing unfortunately we don't call it a powerful or perfect or brilliant speech what are the three things you already saw opening body and ending 
So there are three parts, three main parts, everyone, no matter how short your speech is, how long your speech is, try to include, try to have these three things. I'm sure some of you or most of you are aware of these things. Most of the time, what can we see? We can see a great opening. Energy is there and body is also there. But ending, we, no, it's like it's gone, like a speech is over and then the speaker just walks away and we are like, did he go to grab some water, drink some water and come back? Is it over? And you talk to the other person as well, is it over? And the other person is also not sure. No proper ending, right? That cannot happen everyone. That cannot happen. Ending should be powerful because that's the last thing you say to the audience. Last thing is the lasting thing. And I'll, I'll give you a tip here. In a contest or in your academic presentations, try to provide a brilliant, powerful ending with that positive mind, your lecturers will look at the ballot sheet or the marking sheet and give you marks. Write it down if you are serious of your presentations, because stronger the ending, probably higher the marks. They are human beings, they are not robots, right? But if ending is very dull one and they are like, okay, okay, because they will not remember the way you started by the time you end your speech. Psychological things, right? So keep in your mind, ending is as equal as the opening. Right. Now, the next main thing, we are going to deep, uh, dig, like dive into these topics a little bit. But before that, I want to see whether you all are actively listening. If you're actively listening, you can either give a thumbs up or say yes, put yes into the chat. There are some uh, students who have turned on the cameras, so I can see their faces. You can give either real thumbs up or virtual thumbs up or put yours to the chat, then we know that, all right. Time to go to the next segment. All right, excellent. Yes, okay. Let's take a look at what these things are, everyone. Like I said, there are traditional methods there are cliche that we should avoid at the same time there are some modern techniques a lot of public speakers use let us learn them and using them is completely up to you all right one traditional method or commonly seen method is we can start with greetings so we can start our presentation or the speech by greeting the audience, depending on the time of the day. Maybe I can say a very good morning to all of you who have, gathered, who have joined us today. Greetings. A warm welcome to all the participants. On behalf of University of Sabaragamu, I would like to welcome all of you. So you greet the audience. A good way, but not the only way. That's not the only way. Maybe we can, instead of without greeting, there are so many other ways we can start our speech or presentation to get the attention. If you now you might be asking a fair question, why is opening important? Why is opening important? Opening part, the first few seconds, people decide, the listeners decide, whether you should listen to that speech or whether it's time to take out your smartphone and go to WhatsApp, check what, has, what is happening, go onto Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram. You decide it during the first few seconds. Imagine I came today here in front of you and started my presentation like this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, dear Dr. Rasika and the head of Department of uh, Management. They are undergraduates of University of Sabaragamu. A great morning to everyone. Today we are going to talk about structure in the speech. Then uh, the participants will, those who are joining through a phone, will just flip 
and from Zoom to Facebook, right? But think about the way I started. I said public speaking, communication, presentation with these words, we use the word skill. We normally don't use the word talent because talent comes naturally. Skills can be developed through hours and hours of hard work. And maybe members in the audience, what? What's going on? That's something new to me, so I should listen to this. What is this person talking about? Just like that, everyone, at the beginning, we should be able to grab the attention of the listener, especially when it comes to online platforms. Right? That's why I asked you to turn on the cameras, because you are joining from your homes. Maybe some of you are having your breakfast at the moment. Some of you are in the bed. Some of you are just walking here and there. It happens. I do that. And I can see other people also do. Therefore, it is more challenging today to get the attention of the listener. How to get the attention? There are different techniques, everyone. Maybe greetings is not the best way, but I'd say it's, it's a common way. You can use it. But here there are some more techniques. Another common one is effective one is ask a question. Maybe it's a rhetorical question. You don't expect an answer from the audience. Why do you ask that question purely to get the attention? You make the listener think about it. Example. How many times have you hurt someone using your words? Not using your actions? but using your words. How many times have you used your words to motivate one, to encourage a person? I asked the question, kept a pause. I'm giving the time to the listener to think about it. I don't expect an answer like three times, four times, no. But I wanted you to think about it. Then you start to think, Oh, it was today morning. I argued with my mother. I just shouted at her. I hurt her feelings. So just like that, you connect. Everyone, starting is very much important. Ask a question relevant to the presentation. Maybe you can try this out at your academic presentation. Right? Let's say you are talking about future skills. Through your presentation, you are talking about uh, most, let's say, sought after skills in 2022 or 2021. Then you can ask a question from the panel. Have you ever wondered the skills we, what we had in uh, five years ago would not be useful for the next five years? Next five years? Then the audience might be thinking, really? Yes, you can say, according to the Forbes magazine, 65% of the skills we may need for the next five years, the skills that we did not think we needed to have in the past, something similar they have said. So just like that, you can ask a question at the beginning, everyone. Next is use a quote. Use a quote. A quote means everyone, a saying. A saying of a leader or maybe a teacher, a lecturer, a celebrity, but it should be relevant to your presentation. If you are talking about education, maybe you can use the quote of uh, late Nelson Mandela. Maybe you can start your presentation. Education is the powerful tool we can use to change the world. Our education is a powerful weapon we can use to change the world. The wise words of Nelson Mandela have turned out to be true today. Then you can greet a great morning, uh, dear lecturers, a great morning, dear friends. You bring the quote first, greetings next. You ask a question first, greetings next. Try them out if you have not used them. With an act, this is purely for like very casual occasions in the speech, in speech competitions, 
you can start your speech with an act. Like if you are familiar with Dhananjay Hetiaraj's speech, uh, he starts with an act. He comes onto the stage, uh, takes out his flo uh, coat flower, smells it, and he says, so that's an act. Then he says, just like this flower, you are unique. Just like that, you can start with an act to get the attention, purely to get the attention. Try it out uh, in comparisons. I'm sure you will be able to get the attention. Start with the dialogue. If you are using a story in your speech, there, are, uh, there is a conversation happened between two characters. You can start your speech with that, with the dialogue or a few dialogues. Even you can start with a humorous phrase. You can start with a humorous phrase, but don't recommend you to use this in academic presentations because it can be a disaster. Ask the audience to take an action. Uh, if let's say everyone has turned off their cameras and they don't know how to use the reaction buttons, then please don't ask. Raise your hand, everyone, if you have blah, blah, blah. Then you wait. You wait. Nobody has raised their hand. Then you can't just ask the same question again. Or you can't just go to the next part. Mood will be destroyed. So you need to be very careful when it comes to online platforms. You should know about the audience. That's why I asked. I got the request, uh, permission from Dr. Rasika and requested you to turn on the cameras. Because I was not sure whether you turn the cameras on. Then Dr. Rasika quickly mentioned, yes, we encourage you to turn on the cameras. Then everyone, like most of you started to do so. Right, just like that. If you're asking the audience to take an action, please see whether it is suitable. Sometimes we have seen the speakers ask, my dear friends, please close your eyes for a few minutes and think about what you, the way you started today. Just like that, what the speaker does, he asks the audience to take an action. So see whether it is relevant to your presentation, to your speech. All right. Maybe you think the list is long, but everyone, you can try out these things in the future. That is about opening. After opening, it's all about the body of the presentation of your speech. Now, sometimes what we see, the opening is great, but the points are not into an order, in an order, not organized. Randomly people speak, whatever the things come to their mind. Haven't we experienced that? They bring like impromptu things and random things they talk about. They repeat. How many times have you seen this? They say the same thing again. And you're like, oh, you said it like two minutes ago. And you say the same thing again. Right? So let us not do these mistakes. Because these are the common mistakes your lecturers see throughout their life. So if one can avoid them, that presentation will be remembered, everyone. Will be rewarded by getting good marks. That's what we need ultimately. Once you go to, I'll give you an example. In one of the biggest finance companies in the country, one of my friends is working as a senior manager there. He got the opportunity to go to the board meetings and he was the junior, the most junior manager there. All others were like either senior managers or director level. Why he was invited there because of his presentation skill. And he delivered the presentation. I'm not going to mention the name of this, uh, the owner of the company. If I mention the name, you know who that is. So he admired the presentation a lot. And as a result, he was invited to other board meetings and deliver sales presentation. Everyone, this is not old school things. These are not outdated skills. These are the skills like Forbes magazine and also a lot of universities have done researchers and 
they have mentioned interpersonal communication skills, presentation skills are needed. So how to organize our points after the opening? Let's take a look at them. Simple, straightforward method is everyone. Bring the first point first. After that, second, third, fourth, like that. But depending on the time, depending on the time, you should know how many points you use. Like I said, 15 minutes presentation, you should know that you can't talk about 50 points. That happens. A visual aid is there, presentation is there. What we can see, the presenters, they run through the slides. They just read the slides. Uh, this is the slide and this is the next one, this is the next one. You are not there to count the slides, are you? Why that happens? Content is too much. That means 15 minutes, 50 main points, no. In public speaking, we say less is more. Less is more. Check the scope. Check what you are going to discuss. See how many points you should cover. List them down. Talk about one point. Don't try to repeat. Clear transition, second point, clear trans transition, third point, fourth point, fifth point. You summarize it, end it. Bring a powerful ending. That's a very straightforward method. And here, everyone, try to, now you have, let's say you have five points. Make sure to start with the most powerful point. You have five, five points. It doesn't mean that you can randomly talk about one of them first. Talk about the most powerful point first, bring the supportive materials or further explanation, then go to the next powerful point, supportive materials, next point, next point, like that, likewise. All right, then the uh, audience can understand, right, okay, this is the powerful point. This is the one you get brought first and then next. So very clear understanding can be made. This is not the only way. Like I said, there are other methods as well. Cause, effect, solution. Or you can say problem, effect, solution. You can use this in your, this in your academic presentations also. Firstly, you, you address the why part, the problem, in society, problem in, in the country, problem in the world. You talk about the problem, then you talk about the effects. And maybe your points are all about solutions. What's the point of talking about solutions first? And we don't talk about the issue, we don't talk about the effects. Now there is a saying everyone, don't start with what, start with why. Because people don't want to hear what you have, People want to hear why they should listen to you. Maybe not all the time, but most of the time. You are selling the product and you say it has got this, it has got that. But what if you say why you should use that? Ask that question or answer that question. So another technique you can, another structure you can use everyone in the body, cause, effect, solution. Now, these are the bonus tips for the contest, for if you are a keynote speaker, if you are to deliver a keynote speech, maybe you can use a little advanced, not advanced, I would say, little creative structure like this. Problem, you come up with the problem, talk about the suffering, the way you suffer due to the problem. Tell us how you realized it that you need to come up, come out of this and teach the lesson, share the learnings with the listener. Let's say after you graduate, you become one of the uh, famous or one of the best entrepreneurs in the country and the same university invites you to deliver a keynote. And there you can say, maybe when you were in the university, you had an issue, problem of procrastination, procrastinating, postponing things. That's the issue. Then you say, I had this issue because of that. I had, I failed a lot of exams. 
so suffering instead of four years i had to stay in the university for six years suffering i could not help my parents and then you realized one day you realized it how you realized it maybe your mother's words maybe one of your lecturer's words maybe your inner thoughts your mind told talk to you and you started to change how did you change share it with the audience tell the secret then you can say this is how i changed because of change these are the benefits i started to enjoy this is how i became the youngest um, let's say youngest person to receive this award likewise this is a uh, this is a creative way to use in our presentations now my mind tells me that i talked a lot any questions any questions or clarifications you need areas which were not clear in the, in the like we we spent 40 minutes right we spent 40 long minutes and if there was something which was not clear to you put your question into the chat or maybe just quickly simply ask unmute ask in english in single it doesn't matter uh, but i'm not sure i need to get the permission of dr rasika whether you can use uh, Singhala, but better if you use English. Any questions? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, it will be better to uh, use English because uh, we are going to uh, work in English in the corporate world. So it's uh, even with difficulties, it's better to speak in English. So true. Valid point. Okay. Right. Okay. You are keeping your questions to ask during the Q&A session, right? I know that because you need to get maximum out of Q&A session. All right. Keep them with you. Talking about English, everyone, uh, University of Sabaragamua, and this is the same platform. Uh, I started the program called Relish English and the credit should go to Dr. Shashi uh, because she's the person who invited me to have that presentation, Relish English, to kind of eradicate myths and misconceptions around English language. And we shared some of the tips and tools we can use to be good at English. And that program, everyone, has gone a long way. We conducted it in more than eight state universities in the country. And we spoke to more than 1,600 undergraduates, purely undergraduates. And the next session is going to happen this Saturday at University of Colombo, Faculty of, uh, Faculty of Arts. So I'm privileged, I'm really, it, it is an honor for me to come back. So the credit should go to Dr. Shashi. Right. Now let's take a look at the way we can end the presentation. Like we said, ending, we need to end it with a high note. On a high note, we need to pump a lot of energy. Let's say you did some mistakes in the middle. That's fine. You can kind of, uh, you can kind of do something at the end. Right? Like I said, everyone, last thing is the lasting thing. Just because your lecturers are well experienced, it doesn't mean that they can remember everything you spoke at that time. Maybe 15 presenters came before that, right? So bring a powerful ending if you want to score and it will work. It will work. It doesn't mean that you can just talk about a lot of random things in the presentation and work on the ending only. No. Try to give a message if it is possible. Try to give a message. This is applicable most of the time. Giving a message. We call it take home message. Why we call it take home message? Because we cannot take the speech with us, but we can take the message with us. So simply, you can give a message. Let's see what are the techniques we can use when we are giving messages. Teach a lesson. Like I said, you had a difficulty, you had a bad habit, you suffered and you overcame it. Teach the lesson that you learned. One method, a specific method is everyone call to action. Simply what that means, at the end of your presentation, you ask 
the listeners to take an action. Maybe not applicable, not suitable for academic presentations, but keynote speeches and contests, you can ask them to listeners to take an action. Simply, I can say, let's say I'm talking about pollution, usage of plastics. At the end of my presentation, I can say, next time, when you are ready to, ready to go shopping, ask yourself, am I going to take 10, 15 plastic bags, polythene bags from the market, supermarket, or should I take one durable bag with me? Take the right decision next time, everyone. Take a couple of durable bags when you go shopping. Say no to those polythene bags. Simple action I'm asking the listeners to do or take. Call to action method. The next technique is, second one is look into the future. Think about addiction to mobile phone, uh, increased screen time. Here we are not asking you to take an action, but we take you to the future, into the future. So I can end my presentation by saying, if you continue to get addicted to your mobile phone, sooner or later, you will be a slave and you will be controlled by your phone. So that is like I'm showing you what will happen in the future if you don't do something or if you do something. Pretty simple two techniques, everyone, and use the relevant one or suitable ones. If it is an academic presentation, one of the common ones you can use is summarizing. Summarize what you mentioned. You can bring the words like to conclude. Don't use the cliche like, I am going to end my presentation. No, do you know what you say? You can say to conclude as conclusion. It is very much important for us to have an understanding about the skills we should possess if we want to become successful in the future. Teamwork ability, communication skills, leadership skills, have become most prominent one out of them. Thank you very much, everyone. Just like that, you can end your presentation. Again, thanking is not compulsory, but depending on the occasion, you will have to decide whether or not to use it. So summarize. In this way, it is clearly visible. These, these, these are the reasons which has caused the recession in this particular region in the country. Just like that, summarize. I believe it is a good technique, effective method you can use at the end of your session, uh, presentation or speech. Simple techniques we discussed, call to action method or look into the future. Right, now we have come to the last bit of the segment. The words you use, terms you use, matter a lot. They are very much important. So what are the common mistakes we see? We can see some undergraduates, some speakers, they use the same old ordinary words over and over again. But what if we can use some new words, new terms, extraordinary words a little bit rather than using the same old words it will be a challenge to you also and because you are going to find the better words word selection just think about some of the speeches why can we remember some of the speeches why can't we remember some of the speeches maybe because of the words words the speakers use i can remember aaron beverly's speech one of the past speeches uh, in, in, in World Champion of Public Speaking, he says, it's not how we say or how long our speech that counts. What counts is what we say. So he says that what we say matters more than how much we say. No matter how long you speak, if you don't speak something useful, 
but he put it in the way in a way such a way that we can remember and even in in his winning speech a few years ago he became the world champion of public speaking aaron beverly an american person he said open your heart open your culture still i can remember these words and toastmaster niranjan uh, de silva i think uh, dr rasika knows him one of the admired presenters in the country in Toastmasters fraternity. I think he was a former CEO of uh, Metropolitan, Metropolitan yeah. Com yes, Metropolitan Computers. And he used a nice phrase, practice prevents poor performance. So we call that technique alliteration per, per, per sound. Practice prevents poor presentation. Why can I remember these words? because of the technique he used because of the words he used so if you want your speech to be remembered what you say how you say they matter so here are some techniques if you want to make your speech a remembered one or if you want to make it remembered maybe you can write the words or you can write the main points if it is a contest speech or if it is a short tank in a word of thanks speech, welcome speech, maybe you can write your speech and practice. Or maybe you can write main points only. Personally, I use both techniques. If it is a contest, I make sure that I write every single word and I practice because we can't take any risks when it comes to con contesting. But the problem is, some individuals, what they do, mechanically, they read what they wrote. According to the, according to the, um, let's say, uh, this journal, it can, we can see that 500,000 people every year lose their jobs because of a lack of gratitude, not because of like mechanical tone. And you just read out what you wrote then you what you could have done you could have given the notes to the lecturer then they will just go through and do the even correct the spelling mistakes and give you the marks kavindu is just uh, laughing maybe he has he has seen uh, it from someone else oh, just like that everyone right how many times have you seen this so don't do that these are not the things your lecturers want to see in your presentations Instead of that, what you can do, you write your speech, practice it, practice it. And sometimes you forget some words. That's why we need to write main points as well. A quick technique. After you have uh, written the speech, still quickly highlight the main points. Like I said, five main points are there. And remember, memorize those five main points. First point is starting. Second one is, let's say, the main issue. Third point is uh, the main, let's say, main suffering. The fourth one is actions we took uh, which were not successful. And the fifth one is the new method we have introduced. Just like that. So you remember, you memorize these five points. These are the five main points in my presentation. Then I close my eyes and I think, okay, what's the first one? First one is starting. Second one is uh, the issue. Just like that. What's the benefit? When you were talking about the issue, you forgot some words. But if you can remember what is next in your presentation, what is the next main point in your presentation? That is suffering. You can forget all these things. You can jump into the next point. Otherwise, sometimes we have seen people try to memorize the next word and that next word never comes to the mind. That's the thing doesn't come to your mind. We have seen it from experienced speakers. So mind mapping will be, will come in handy here. Mind mapping everyone just simply uh, mark, write down the main points in your speech, practice them. This is the first one, this is the second one, likewise.
avoid common words and terms, especially if you want to deliver an inspirational speech, motivational speech, please don't use the same words like never give up, you are unique, you are different, believe in yourself. They are the messages you should give, please don't get me wrong, but they are not the words you should use. Yesterday, one of my club members who is getting ready for a contest is a He's an undergraduate of University of Kalania. So in their Gavel Club, they are getting ready for the best speaker contest. So I got a phone call yesterday and he asked, Chosmaster Chamin, is it, is it okay if I say, trust is fragile? That's what he said. Trust is fragile. And I was like, wow, please don't change any word. Use the same words because that's the first time I heard someone said, trust is fragile. Maybe you can say, save it. It's very gentle. The moment you harm it, it can be broken into thousands of pieces and entire life will not be enough for you to fix it back. Trust is fragile. But how many times have we heard the common terms? Never give up, believe in yourself, Give the same message, but my dear friends, don't use the same words. Like I said, Aaron Beverly, uh, my car, last year world champion of public speaking, he said, uh, I can't remember the exact words, he said, um, the, the victory is not in result. The victory is in try. What's a simple message? Try your best. And forget the rest. Don't worry about the result. But he did not say it using common terms. He used new words. So just like that, everyone, in your presentation even, try to use some more beautiful words, descriptive words, novel words. I'm sure your lecturers will enjoy your presentations and they will remember, they will reward by giving more marks. And if it is a contest speech, delivering at a social uh, gathering, you can even use parts of, uh, you can quote poems, quote novels, quote speeches. That's what I did right now, right? I quote my car's speech. I quoted Aaron Beverly's speech, quote. Then even you can add variety to your presentation. Rather than I'm talking, talking, I just brought some sayings of others. And those who are familiar with literature, you know about these spicy words, right? How to spice up using rhetorical devices, or we call them literary devices, literature techniques. Take a screenshot or please write them down. Do a self-study if you are not aware of these things. This is not the right time to talk about these things because it takes a lot of time um, if you are going to touch upon these things. Similes, metaphors, idioms, alliterations, triads, pretty basic things. Individuals like you, these things are not rocket science. Do a research. They are simple techniques that you can use to add color, but everyone, I don't recommend you to use in your academic presentations there, right? Please be mindful because similes and all, it just to add more color to the speeches. You can say my life was a roller coaster ride. My life was a game and I did not know how to win. Just like that, similes. But maybe it's not better to use in academic presentations in your university in front of your Lecturers, right, the last thing, like I said, last thing is a lasting thing, so I should put more effort to emphasize this, all right? Uh, faces, when I look at the faces, I don't see any sleepy faces, so I think I was doing a pretty decent job. All right, let's go to the last bit of our segment, everyone. Bonus tips, here are the bonus tips. Since you were waiting, you were staying for until the last uh, few minutes, bring your energy. 
don't read. We already talked about it. Um, be audible. Avoid cliche. That means everyone, like outdated uh, terms are there. Like I said, today I'm going to talk about. Yes, we know that. You all know that I'm here to talk about something, right? I'm not here to sing a song. So why should I say I'm here to talk about? Just avoid that and just say what you're going to say. You can save time as well. So there also, you are delivering a presentation. Let's say you are the 15th one. All other 14 candidates, they have said, dear lecturers, I'm here to talk about. <laughs> Imagine how much they hate that term. So maybe you don't need to you take, use that. Or you can say, let me share findings of my research. Let me share. Maybe you can use this kind of new presentation. Just go on to YouTube. Check the presentations. Listen to TED speeches. To tell you the truth, everyone, when I was a university student, or before when I was going to university student, I had to travel 10, 15 kilometers to check an email. True thing. To check an email, I had to travel. I had to take two buses to go to a communication shop pay them and internet was like dead slow right to read the uh, read an email when i was taking ielts ielts test again i had to go to a communication shop pay for one hour take the tests but today you can do it using your mobile phone why don't we use the resources youtube is a nice place not only to watch like songs or musical videos or funny things or these short videos we can use it as a learning platform check the different techniques people use in ted talks and in professional world people like steve jobs and elon musk oprah winfrey and bill gates right even in sri lanka the business giants how they deliver presentations avoid cliche Avoid un, like these common terms. Create an ending tone. We talked about it. Uh, smile. Of course, you can smile because you don't need to be very serious, depending on the situation, right? But if it is not a funeral, I think you know, like if it is not a very serious uh, occasion, you can just smile. When you smile, people think that you're confident. Maybe you're smiling because you're scared, but people don't know about it. That's why like, I don't know, automatically a smile comes into my, my, uh, my face. So I smile no matter 10 people are there in front of me, thousand people are there, I smile, then they also smile, then we can connect. But if you have a serious face, audience is going to be more serious than you that can happen so smile try to record your speech especially if you're delivering it online uh, have a free zoom account record your speech watch it and practice again be confident everyone that is ultimately what i want to say no matter you are too sure about your presentation, you are not fully ready, show your confidence. And even lectures are not sure whether this person just said the right things because he was so confident. No matter how strong your points are, if you are not confident, everyone, people will not buy what you say. Be confident. Practice, practice will give you confidence. All right? Practice will give you confidence. I practiced my last speech, uh, which won the second place of divisional level 50 times. 50 times, it doesn't mean that I practice the same thing. If you think 50 is a high number, what about 500? One of my friends told me, I practiced, uh, one of my friends practiced 500 times and he said I practiced 250 times. Think about it right think about it if you think that three times you practice and you say 
oh, I'm really tired. I practice three times. Oh no, people are there out there who have practiced more than that. When you get the chance to speak, when you get the chance to deliver a presentation, take it very seriously because not everyone can do it. After fear of death, some people say that fear of public speaking or speaking a few words in front of an audience has become the biggest fear. My dear undergraduates, like I said, never ever underestimate your speaking skill. Maybe that is the biggest skill you need after you graduate, after you brush up your English knowledge, when you go to the present uh, interview, when you go to the job market, maybe public speaking can be or will be the biggest strength in you. So don't take it for granted.